Something like ours, being associated to demanding bass players is a necessity in order to keep ourselves in constant evolution mode. Now, uh, there's a, a young man who engaged us in many of the challenges that made us Woodatronics as we are today. Uh, his name is Roberto Badoglio. He's one of the most in-demand bass players on the Berlin music scene today. And uh, he uh, just formed a band, he recently formed a band called Beyond Turbines with Steve Hunt and Virgil Donati from Alan Holdsworth's uh, roster of bandmates. They uh, recently released their first album called Beyond Turbines as well. And uh, which is a, a great showcase of Roberto, both as a bass player and as a composer. Uh, it was a great, great pleasure to have uh, this chat with Roberto and with the same pleasure I bring it up to you. Your compositions have a remarkable melodic element, kind of like a signature storytelling quality. What's behind, what's driving your songwriting? Um, I would say that um, often it starts from a melodic idea and um, then I try to develop it and other times it can be a groove idea or an harmonic idea. And it's true what you say, I try to keep in mind this uh, storytelling approach. It seems that nowadays composers refuse or even reject categorization of their music. What's your point of view? When I compose, uh, I don't really think about a specific genre. I just think about music. Uh, we can actually say that uh, till now most of uh, the stuff I did uh, goes under the category of fusion. And unfortunately nowadays, when you say the word fusion, a lot of people freak out, you know, they get uh, scared. It seems uh, you have to call like an exorcist or something. And this is happening because uh, there's been a lot of uh, music called fusion in the last 30 years that actually is really cheesy or, you know, really commercial. And uh, actually, I, I don't, I try to not really care about this because for me, fusion, it's uh, like weather report, John McLaughlin, you know, Herbie Hancock. So at the end, I'm happy if my music goes uh, under that category. As for playing chords, what's peculiar about bass as a harmonic instrument? Personally, I believe that uh, sometimes chords sounds even better on a bass than on a guitar because there's, a, I mean, there's a deeper voice. And uh, I'm really into, you know, pianists, so like uh, Herbie Hancock especially, or Chico Ria. And um, so I tried, when I improvise, when I take a solo, I try to explore those counterpoints or block chords ideas and try to put those into my, my bass playing as well. I think uh, that uh, when you want to express yourself, you should not have any limit of any kind, you know. <laughs> Your right hand action is really one of a kind. How did you develop that peculiar approach? Um, you know, I just uh, use all the four fingers. And uh, this happens because um, uh, when I started, you know, to get into, into soloing with bass or into Jaco, actually when I started to get into Jaco, I could not really play with the two finger, the normal standard technique, his grooves. So I don't have a lot of patience. I mean, I'm not that kind of guy with a lot of patience. I uh, want everything like right now. So I wanted speed and be able to play those ghost notes. So I started to experiment with different approach. And then uh, when I saw Dominic Piazza and Matt Garrison for the first time, I was like, oh, okay, you see, there's, there's a different way to do it. So I, at the end, I made a mix up between their techniques and I 
came out with this four finger technique. Making a living out of your own music without following marketing logics is extremely hard nowadays. There are no record companies seemingly interested in investing in quality music. How do you conceal survival with making a deep, authentic, expressive statement? It's hard. Uh, it's really hard because, uh, yeah, as you say, there's no real labels so much interested in this kind of music anymore. And uh, so you need to do everything by yourself, which means to find a budget for your record, for your videos, because now videos are really important as a promotion tool, promotional tool. And then you need a budget for, uh, you know, touring and promoting. So you can imagine, sometimes it's really, really difficult to not give up. So what I try to do is try to never forget what was the reason I started to play at the beginning, which uh, you know was not maybe to have a lot of likes on Facebook or video sharing and all this stuff you know that that nowadays seems to be important, but it was actually just expressing yourself, and that's all. Thank you. 